Welcome back to The Pulse. My name is Matt. This is Crypto Heartbeat. And don't mess with Texas, folks. I'm back. Can you believe this? On a Saturday, 316 in the afternoon, the minute I was born, 316 in the afternoon. Can you believe it? From Central Texas. Wow. What an era we live in. What a time we live in. You watching the news, folks? Shinzo Abe gets um, assassinated the longest serving prime minister of Japan, people of Sri Lanka. Oh my goodness. You know, <laughs> you know, Sri Lanka is showing what a real, um, insurrection is. If you know what I'm saying, folks, welcome back to the pulse. My name is Matt. This is a special Saturday edition of the pulse. And we're talking about the crisis era. We're actually going to learn something. And it's because of David Lee that we're going to learn something. He actually spurred this with a with a, uh, a video he sent me. And so I wanted to talk about this. And it's just, of course, watching the videos and seeing what's going on in the Netherlands, what's going on in Sri Lanka, what's going on across the United States, what's going on in Texas. And I want to help make some sense of it for you. I think, you know, one of the things that a lot of people in crypto do is they they do TA, right? Technical analysis. We're going to take we're going to do some analysis from more of a macro perspective about what time is it? It's a crisis era, folks. And that crisis era is what we're going to be talking about. And I know David Lee's going to be happy about that. All right, folks, let's take a look at the, the chat and then we'll get into this. It's going to be a short stream today. It's just going to be an opportunity to um, to share a little bit of perspective, a little bit of wisdom and help you understand what we need to be being prepared for. I think we're always in kind of a micro mindset. I think we're thinking about money or the financial system or all of that. But I think understanding the macro and understanding the cycles is really helpful. It's not that you're predicting, you know, specific events, but you understand what time it is because these things recur, right? They are cycles. And why are there cycles? Because we live in the construct of cycles. We live literally in a framework, right? I assume you go to sleep. I'm unconscious for like seven or eight hours a night. I don't know about you. My, my prediction is that you likely are, right? Sun up, sun down, bathroom break after a stream, right? There's a lot that's going on that is really dictated by, you know, the planet that we're on the construct or the framework which we're in. So we're going to talk about this, but this is the crisis era as um, defined by authors, Neil Howe and William Strauss. And they wrote, um, they wrote a book called the fourth turning. And I want to just show you some things about it. Just some observations. Um, they also in 1991 started a book or wrote a book called generations. And they were really the, the first ones to really talk about, you know, generations. And it's funny, I, I started college in 1991. And this is when this book came out. And of course, when I got into college, all the people in student affairs were talking about generations, right? Generation X, right? We are the Gen Xers. And, you know, they were telling us who we were. And of course, I wasn't having any of that stuff, right? But uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Let's say hello to you. And then we'll get into the content. Hopefully, this will be something that will open your eyes to where we are right now, and what our responsibility is. Because it's getting hot in here. It's really getting hot in here. All right. Taryn starts us off today on Saturday afternoon with crypto. A heartbeat appeared in a dream of mine last night. Do tell. Do tell. I wonder what kind of dream that was. Hopefully it was something prophetic that you'll help me understand um, better about the, the future. Um, Mr. Peach. What is up, Mr. Peach, on a Saturday? What a what a treat, David Lee. He's here. I know he's going to be here because that guy traveled all the way from southwestern Indiana to come to my dad's funeral. David Lee in the house. Thanks for being here, buddy. Good to see you. Francis Powell. Hello, all. How's it going? It's going well. Actually, to be honest with you, this is what I did today. I got up pretty early and I had to go over to my old house and clean up the garage. And I'm still not done. And it's 105. And so I took a break. Came to the office, took a shower, got all gussied up for you folks. Decided to do this, take a little rest, and then I'm going to head back and I'm going to go sweat 
uh, like crazy, getting all the, the final things done because we moved over the 4th of July weekend and I'm just finishing up the, the last stuff. You know, when you move and like, there's still stuff in like, there's a broom, right? There's like a mop still there. You're like, hold on, I forgot that. And it's amazing what you end up forgetting about having to look in all the drawers and all the cabinets and all that stuff. My online ghost is here. Hello, everyone. Godfather J6. It's so great to see you guys. You guys are so consistent. Facing reality. What is up? David Lee. Pa -pa -pow. Northern Ireland's in the house. Stephen Beers. What's going on? I, I had a, um, a Scottish reference. Um, and of course, that is offensive to the Irish. And so hopefully I didn't offend you with my meme. It was actually a reference to, um, so I married an axe murderer and it was actually a Richard Hart meme. So hopefully no offense to the Nor Northern Irish folks having a Scottish reference on Twitter. Um, I will include you. I am a fine Irishman myself, as you can see. I've got the, uh, the flushness as well. Facing reality, what up fam? Greetings from the Netherlands. Now, there's some interesting things happening in the Netherlands. Um, it's crazy. The unrest, the season of unrest that we're in. Torin, sweet crypto heartbeat stream. That's right. Well, I saw that Hexo was on, and I love watching Hexo. And I'm like, I can't compete with that, right? I cannot compete with that. So I, uh, I waited until, and that gave me a chance to take a shower, get the, uh, get the, the sweat off. Der Schwimmer. Yay, Netherlands, home of the family name. Very nice. Very, very nice. All right, who else we got here? Facing reality, David Lee. Max! Meow, meow, kitty. What's up, Max? Good to see you again. I haven't seen you in a while. David Lee's excited to see you as well. Max, where you been? Um, clean up my garbage. Only 104 here. That's that's exactly what I was doing. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a sweaty, sweaty uh, recipe. That was one of the finest Saturday Night Live skits ever. Um, they're inspired by Canadian protesters. You know, and we're going to talk about that. Certainly inspired, but this is the season. This tis the season to be unrusting. Uh, big boy, look at the size of that. Look at the size of that head. It's like Sputnik. You look like an orange on a toothpick. Oh, my gosh. So great. Go cry yourself to sleep on your enormous pillow. That's one of my favorite, favorite movies. Deborah Phillips. Hi, Matt. Hello, fam. And sending huge love to the Netherlands. That's right. Max has been working. That's good, right? Hold on to cash. Absolutely. So let's talk about this. I'm gonna I'm gonna share a screen with you and I'm gonna encourage you to watch this video. We're not gonna watch it um, per se, but let's take a look. So Van Neistat, who is Casey Neistat's brother, did a video, and I think he probably broke down the book, The Fourth Turning, the best, because he made it really simple, and it's a very creative way to do it. He's a filmmaker, and he literally did this in paint on this white backdrop, um, and I really like the way he presented it, because the book is a lot more technical than this, and I think it's really helpful um, to walk through some of these things, and this is this is the premise of these turnings that they're in essentially generational blocks. And they're not exactly to the day, um, but there's these eras, right? And so if you look at this reference on the screen here, you've got the high, the awakening, the unraveling, and the crisis. And if you look back into kind of American history of generations, um, this is like the fourth or fifth time this has happened, this cycle. And it's really, really kind of, not creepy, but um, amazing how actually this cycle is pretty obvious once they point it out to you. And so if you understand where you are and what time it is and what you fall into, these are general tendencies because there's people that have different, you know, you got a different personality, you've got different skill sets and all that. And it's hard for a number of people, you know, to be pigeonholed. And this is not meant to do that. It's more for you to understand how things work. So I'm going to just illustrate this with uh, with this idea. You know, what were people like that grew up in the Depression? My grandfather was born in 1911, he grew up in the Depression. He came of age during that time. And then my parents, you know, boomers after the war were born. 1948, my dad was born. And it's a um, it was this time of, you know, kids are to be seen and not heard. And then, of course, you've got the unraveling and then the, the, the crisis era. And that's what we're talking about right now. 
But I encourage you, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play this video, but I want you to take a look at this. This is We're in a Fourth Turning. What does that mean? And it's by Van Neistat. Actually, I'll put a link. Actually, let me pull that link right now. I'm gonna put this link in the chat so that you can watch this later. Okay. It is it is absolutely worth watching. Okay. So let's talk about this because it is it, it's really extremely relevant as of like today. And that's why I wanted to do this because I saw the people in Sri Lanka, 10,000 plus people just pouring in. And it's, um, you know, basically said Sri Lanka is bankrupt. And if you think about what's coming, this is the beginning of seeing literally people starving, literally people not having um, basic necessities. And, you know, of course, in the United States, it's, I mean, asleep at the wheel asleep at the wheel. And these things have to happen in order for people to step up and to say no, because these things have happened over and over and over again. It's just like Neo going to the architect's room in the Make Matrix Reloaded. And he's like, hmm, that's different. This is the sixth time you've been here, Neo. And he's like, what? Yep. So this is the fifth time or the fourth time in the United States that we've been in this kind of crisis period. And it defines who the people are. Okay. So um, I'm going to just take a look at this, this high time he, he references in this, and I'm going to actually go into this and I'm going to make it bigger. Let's go into theater mode. Actually, let's go into full screen mode. All right. So let's take a look at this. This is um, the beginning. This would be 1946. So it starts in this history block, and this is an 80 year block. And there, are, it, you know, the book goes all the way back, but I just want to walk through this pretty interesting so we drop the atom bomb and World War II is over. There's a victory and everybody exhales, right? So this is the high, 1946 to 1964. This is rock and roll, space program, uh, jets, Corvette, Mustang, bikini, right? This was, this was a high time. And if you think about it, this is what I would consider more of the Renaissance time, right? These two first blocks here, the high and the awakening. And it's like, we finally got to exhale. There's peace. We won the war. And like, of course, you know, so many kids were born, right? I mean, the baby boom happened because of this, right? Everyone kind of exhaled. And think about what it was like prior to 1946 in America. You had World War I. You've got the Depression. You've got unbelievable unrest. And then, and that's the, the previous crisis. And then war and rewriting the rules. And then it's like war's over and we have this new kind of renaissance time. The second block is the awakening. And if you think about this, this is 1964 to 1984. And just think about this. This is when the boomers were coming of age, right? This is when they were getting into, you know, remember yuppies, right? But this was a time of awakening. Bob Dylan, the Beatles, LSD, Woodstock. Stanley Kubrick, Star Wars, computers, all that technology stuff. And this was an awakening era. The third one is the unraveling. And of course, this is 1984 to 2008, the Berlin Wall, Cobain, right? And this is, if you think about it, this is the time in which I, as a Gen Xer, came of age, right? 1984, good gracious, right? 84, all the way through the mid 90s. You know, this was a time where Generation X were latchkey kids, right? All the parents were snorting coke, right? They were literally AWOL. And parents were literally um, trying to achieve, right? And I think what was uh, what's interesting about Generation X is we just have very little um, trust for authority. And one of the definitions of that kind of Gen X uh, group is called the nomads. And it depends on what's happening in the country when you come of age, right? And so this goes up into 2008. And of course, you know, I, I held this back from what was written here in 2008. We know that 2008 was the beginning of the crash and the beginning of the pump of money into the system, right? We are experiencing this period of time, 2008 to 2028, perhaps, maybe into, the, into 2030. This is going to be an absolute time of crisis. And what have we seen? Since 2008 and quantitative easing, money, unrest we got wars we got rumors of wars we got pandemics we've got all of this what's amazing though is in 1991 when they wrote the initial book 
they actually predicted that in this crisis era that there would be a major virus, which is just so crazy that they knew this. But I'm going to just I'm going to I'm going to stop with this here and I'm just going to say watch this video and if you want to go deeper pick up the book The Fourth Turning. The reason I share this the, the most uh, the significant reason is because of the project that we have announced and if you're if you're living under a rock you don't know about it but I will I will share it for you. So we announced that we're going to be launching a token called Texan token on uh, the Pulse chain. And we announced it on Independence Day, a matter of fact. And the Texan token, um, you can find at texan.cc. You can learn about it. Completely uh, immutable contract. It has been audited. The DApp's done. It's in the test net. It's all complete. We're all completely doxxed. I mean, it is lock, stock, and barrel done. And what's great about that is we wanted to have all of that done before we told you folks about it. But what is the, the the innovation here? There's two things. One, it's the first endowment contract on the blockchain. And two, it's the first time the crypto space, the blockchain, has been applied to a political utility. Now, I want you to understand that this is a big deal. We're Richard Hart ecosystem people. We are doing something innovative in this space. We should be proud of what we're doing. We got about 32 people in our on our team unbelievable developers, and even Brandon from Rags to Riches is a part of all this. And what are we doing? We're trying to unlock global generosity. We're trying to enable a group of 500,000 people that are part of the membership of the Texas Nationalist Movement to get on the ballot the ability for Texas to become an independent nation. And so what would be the right timing, right? And this is amazing that all of this stuff happens. 18 months ago when I was talking about this or two years ago, I had a friend say to me, eh, there's no way this is going to happen unless people are in the streets. And it's interesting that it's not only just the will of men and women. It's the timing of the cycles that we're in. And the fact that we are in this crisis era is a huge, huge, huge prevailing wind for the success of Texas independence, of people across the world standing up and saying no. Because every time we've had this crisis era of 20 years, this generation of crisis, we've basically said no, stood up, said no, and fixed it. Well, who are who is Gen X? Gen X are people that are pragmatic. They're people who want to fix a the problem. They're people who are going to actually bring up potential alternatives and solutions. And that's exactly what I'm doing with Brandon and Ray and Ryan and David a crypto stylist, and a wild SJ, all sorts of folks that you know. Amazing group of people. All the people in the mods, immutable. All of them. I can't name them all. They're amazing. JD. The cool thing about this, though, is that when you think about, you know, there's only so much you can do, right? We're, we're building a crypto project. We're trying to tokenize a community of 500,000 people. We're tying a political outcome as a utility to the blockchain. We're building the first endowment contract. But what we're doing is we're looking at this time and saying, wow, what an amazing opportunity that we have to rewrite the rules. You know, to me, with everything that's happening is that you've got this rise of globalism, right? And you've got people pushing back. What was Brexit? They did not like this globalist agenda of the EU. And they said, no, no, look at Scottish independence. You, you start looking at what people are saying. And then, of course, things get bad and people have been asleep at the wheel and they mess things up and they ship, they, they sell your strategic petroleum reserve to China. That's what Biden did, right? Can't even read off a teleprompter. People recognize when things are going to hell in a handbasket. And that's on top of all these things of Ukraine war and all this stuff. And it's a bizarre world, people making decisions. We've got massive amounts of corruption. And, you know, what I like about Texas and Texas people and this concept of restarting is this idea of rebooting the system, you know, a technological concept of a reboot. What do you have to do? Sometimes you have to restart your machine, right? Hey, reboot your computer. And what does it do? It resets things. Well, if you're in Texas and you don't have a pair of boots, there's a problem. 
We're going to reboot this system, folks. That's what this is all about. This is about strengthening the people of Texas and people that believe in the spirit of Texas around the world. Sovereignty, freedom, self-determination, individual liberty. And say, no, we want to live in a place that is um, that stands up for fairness, equality, right? That's back to the original founding principles, back to, you know, popular control is not controlled by corporations. It's interesting that we find ourselves in this fourth turning, this crisis era, and you wonder why 90% of the people within the, it was the Republican Party uh, platform, voted for a referendum in November of 2023 on the Texas ballot. That's huge. 66% of voters in Texas, based on the most recent poll, 66% said they would vote for Texas independence. You only need 50 plus one. And of course, with all the shenanigans that go on around elections and voting and that type of thing, you got to win by a lot. But I ask this question. When you're in a crisis, where do good people go? Where do good people go? And if you think about this, what would it look like if we were able to kick the cord out of the wall and we were to re be able to reboot the system? The problem, though, is the financial side of things. And so this is really the innovation that we're working on in this crisis era, and that is this idea of a donation phase to say, we're going we're gonna to encourage people to give to a nonprofit organization so that they can accomplish their goal to make a place that not only is based on the truth and our founding principles and preserves America in Texas, right? I, I don't even recognize it, right? Go to Washington. Come on. We don't even recognize America. What if we preserve that in Texas? And what if it was a place that was really attractive to people in crypto? It's already attractive to businesses, right? We've got Tesla, we've got Dell, we've got Caterpillar, we've got, uh, it's unbelievable, the ninth largest economy in the world. And the point of this is to stand up and to push back. And so what do the people in Sri Lanka do? They literally go to the streets. When you don't have food and when you're angry, that's what ends up happening. I don't want to see anything that's related to violence in any way, but that's where the American ideal, right? This idea that we have inalienable rights right? That we're not led by authoritarians, that all political power is inherent in the people and that the people determine what is the best course of action for their life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. We're not given rights by the state. We're given rights by the creator. You have those rights. They are just defined by government, right? They define them. They say, hey, you have these things and this is how we're going to set up this thing that's going to be best for our future and our posterity. And there comes a time where you have to cast those things off. And so with this project, in this crisis era, we're saying this is an opportunity for us to provide an alternative for people. Now, there are people who are like, oh, I don't like politics. That's fine. This is not a project for you then. But this is truly a pivotal and watershed moment, in my opinion. And this is significant and it's important. And if you're somebody that wants to stand up and push back, you finally got a lever to pull. You finally got some handles, folks. And on top of that, we've got some of the greatest tokenomics to be able to um, help people secure their future with the first endowment contract on the blockchain. And so it feels right to, in this time of crisis, contribute to making things, um, re basically rebooting the system making them more attractive and making them more accessible and basically saying no, standing up and saying, no, this isn't right. We need to make sure that we, all men and women are created equal. I was in Springfield, Illinois, and I went to the, the home. It was incredible. It was Abraham Lincoln's home. And I was in the home and I was listening to the tour and the story about what, what happened. He literally came off the prairie with nothing. He only had stuff in his saddlebags and he ended up in Springfield and he went into like the general store and asked about, Hey, how can I get a place to stay? And he didn't have any money. And the guy befriended him and said, Hey, you can stay in the back of our general store. He had gotten his law degree and he started working for somebody, you know, doing some legal work. And then of course the rest is, you know, ultimately history. 
What's incredible, though, is from the very beginning, in that crisis era, just like today, this is the 1840s, 1850s, this is when Abraham Lincoln basically stood up for the values of equality. And it was something that he believed in. All, all, he believed the scriptures that said that all men are created equal, right? This idea that you are given these, these rights, right? That they're given by the creator. And that the founding principles were correct, that it wasn't supposed to be, well, it's only for this type of Anglo-Saxon male, um, that no, all men are created equal. And when I say men, I mean all men and women, right? And at that time, not the case, right? There's some interesting things at that time. We won't talk about suffrage right now. That's a whole other topic. But at the end of the day, conviction in a crisis. And what do we have? What do we have? We have the tools. This is the first time ever that in the blockchain, we've utilized the blockchain for something that I think is consequential. It's not NFTs, right? It's not breeding your online critters. It's not gaming. It's not the metaverse. No, it's something that potentially could create a place where good people could go. And that we could literally say, you know, is the entire West gone crazy and rotted from within? Yes, that's why it's the crisis era. So how are we going to fix that? How are we going to work on fixing that? And I think the way to do that is to unlock resources for as many people in Texas and across the world as we possibly can and help fund those that want to make this place, Texas, the ninth largest economy in the world and one of the greatest states and one of the greatest brands, be strong. I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but I know that strengthening people, seeing what has happened to hexagons, happened to 500,000 no-coiners, that's like a dream. Obviously, that percentage is not, not going to get 100% of people. But this is an exciting future, and we're a part of creating the systems and the processes by which we restore this to, public, to popular control, right? That it make it fair, that there's, there's blind justice again, right? There's capitalism, not crony capitalism. There's fairness and equality. We need to return it to its literally founding principles. We don't have to change it. We don't have to have a new system. No, we have a framework, and it's like preserving the real America. Who's going to do it? Is it Vermont? Heck no. Texas. Texas is a state of mind, folks. And there's people across the world that are like, what do you do? I'm in Canada. I'm in Australia. What do I do? I'm in Sri Lanka. We're going to see children dying of, uh, of not having any food, right? They're going to literally be starving because of these decisions that we've made. And I don't mean we. I mean collectively we. And this is what we get with the crisis era. And so pushing back on authoritarianism and supporting the... Richard Hart ecosystem, which I think is going to be the alternative sovereign financial system in the future. I think it's the only thing that's going to hold up because we're committed to the things that are all about why the blockchain was created. Decentralization It's what it's about. Let's get into the chat. Let's get into the chat. That's enough for right now. All right. Let's see what we got here. Good vibes, folks. Good vibes. All right. Here we go. Oh, Texan. That's right. Is that a caliber, Mr. Peach? Any opinion on Richard Hart? PP size. Why would I have any opinion on that? Terrafin. What's up, Dean? Good to see you again, Matt. You need look no further than the WEF Bond villain, Klaus Schwab. Yeah, boy, I saw that that group of folks in NATO standing there, and it literally, you know, it had a pan shot, and it was like in 24P, and it looked all the cinematic, and I'm like, this is literally a movie, a dystopian Bond movie. And of course, you know, you'll be happy. You'll own nothing and be happy. And you go, they're, it's not like they're hiding this, right? They're telling us. We want to westernize the world. We want to then clamp down and tax everyone based on how we're destroying the planet, right? We want to convince people with this crisis. We want to own everything and you rent from us. And we will be the nanny state for you. And then we'll have a global court. And then, right, they want to have these existential things so that they can show you, you need us, right? And literally, Klaus Schwab, I mean, he literally, even the way he talks, the way he looks, seems like it's a cartoon character. 
Terrafin, what's up with the dab? DCR in the house. Max, funny how Bitcoin addresses were blacklisted in Canada, but if they used Ethereum and Tornado Cash or just Monero, they wouldn't be able to censor the addresses. There you go. Right? Security. Security is huge. I'll tell you, droning on again and again, hitting the home gym at the, mo oh, also known as mowing. Yeah, that's the home gym. I gotcha. Buying bots to do the, one. yeah, wouldn't that be nice? The, the Roomba for the lawn, I think it actually exists. Reminds me, uh, Four Steps to Tyranny for Communism to Take Over a People. Very interesting. Well, watch that video. That video is really, really good. Terrafin with the love. Give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Hello, bro. Hello, bro. I predicted, I predicted that if energy is made expensive due to global warming hysteria, there would be at least millions dying of starvation. And that's, you're right on. You're right on. It's happening. It's beginning. Right. First country to fall bankruptcy, Sri Lanka. Right. And it's just going it, to it's literally going to, you know, at the end of the day, what did we do? We're exporting inflation everywhere because things are denominated in the dollar, especially energy. Right. Debt is. But also, you know, people having to buy oil and gas. And then we make these decisions, you know. Ah, oh, man, I get me started on this stuff. Um, Torrent saying, what is Matt reading from high times for? No, I'm not reading from high times, even though, you know, you could probably say uh, Casey Neistat and his brother, they're filmmakers and everybody exhales a high time. What's up, man? I see what you're saying. I'm sorry. Another hexagon already in the goof off mode. That's good. Good. Um, see you, Max. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. David Lee says, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much. The Texan token Terrafin. Thank you, sir. Uh, if you want to know more about the Texan token, you can check us out, t.me forward slash Texan token. And, of course, Rags and myself and others, uh, we're talking about it pretty much daily. Uh, catch us on Twitter, Texas underscore token. But check it out. We actually, um, right now, um, on the test net, it's crazy to see how much liquidity and people are playing around with it and doing transactions. It's really neat. Texan.cc is where you can where you can go. Um Art Ramon painting. Almost all of the American branded boots are made in China. Get Mexico Mexican boots, still handcrafted. Or get Texas boots, right? Those are real boots. That's a great point, though. When I get my next pair of boots, I'm going to make sure there's no Chinese boots. Texas boots, right? Support people at home. Steve Wright. What's up? Steve Wright. My son lives outside the woodlands. He loves Texas and supports freedom like I do. Steve Wright from Santa Barbara. Man, if I could have Santa Barbara in Texas, you know, the closest thing to Santa Barbara in Texas is nothing. Nothing is like Santa Barbara in Texas. Santa Barbara is just fantastic. I love it. I don't like all the things that come with it, but I love it. I mean, it is like, oh, there's a golf course right on the coast there. I'm not sure what it's called. Man, I played that course, and I'm just like, this is like as close to heaven as you can get. Love me some Santa Barbara. Papa Naya, Shelly, I do. Um, do, 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 do. Anders, good evening. Good evening to you. Monica, Monica with MoFit Meals. What's up? Hi, chat room Saturday. So good to see you. Thanks for being here. Samantha Kelly's here. Honestly, what a time to be alive, isn't it? I agree 100%, Samantha. This is it. We were made for this time, but this is another reason. So, you know, I'm going to shill. I'm going to shill something, right? This is the tax and token shill. It's one thing to like the tokenomics of something. You can add, well, maybe the team I like, maybe the, the uh, D app I like, maybe I like the tokenomics. That's, that's, those are important things, right? It's audited. I like these things. I like these guys. That's fine. Right. Those are the normal things. Now add the utility of Texas independence and letting the people of Texas decide, right? People have blocked the referendum for years and it only takes resources to be able to show people that the, the there's literally 66% of people that vote for it, right? We have to show the people in Austin that we're serious. Okay. And then the third thing, the prevailing wind of what time it is in the world it is a crisis era. What do you think is going to happen? Oh, everybody's just going to get along and not, you know, storm the, the hill, right? Like in Sri Lanka. No, it's going to continue to get worse. And where do good people go? Imagine a place. Imagine a place. 
I mean, there's so many things. You may care about social things. You may care about uh, liberty, like freedom of speech, freedom of movement. You may care about freedom of association. You may care about blind justice. You may care about um, all sorts of things. You may care about the Second Amendment. You may care about um, people just leave me alone. You might care about blockchain. You know, when you get a chance to reboot the system, guess what? You get to rethink about the rules. You know, the federal leviathan, what they call that is that's the bureaucratic state. It's gotten so big and so gangly that a lot of the regulations and things are not from elected. They're not laws. They're, they're policy that's made by bureaucrats, and that controls your life, right? And that's what you see across the world. People are pushing back on corruption, right? Everybody's got, you know, crony capitalism, right? We've got people that are lobbying people. You go to Washington, and people buy you off, and you're like, no, do it for me so that my business does this. And that's the issue, right? And regular people don't get represented. And then they go, like, I've had enough. I've had enough. You're just there lining your own pockets, right? That's what generally is happening. Now, are there some good people that go to Washington? Absolutely. But they're clearly not able to make a difference. And so when you get to this crisis area and you stop and you say, hold on a second, what would things look like if we actually thought about the resetting it, right? Because it's not that the original core structure and framework isn't genius. It is. But the problem is it's gotten, it's almost like it's um it's gained a lot of weight, right? And it's got a lot of new appendages and it's got a lot of, you know, added weight. And we need to trim that stuff off. We need to prune it. We need to tend the garden. And I think the way you do that is by kicking the cord out of the wall. But imagine a place like that. Imagine a place where we preserve what has made America great in the great state of Texas, which would become the Republic of Texas again, nine years from 1930 or 1836. March 2nd, Washington on the Brazos, Declaration of Independence from Mexico. What's up? But yes, an amazing time to be alive. And I, I sense that, that we have a responsibility. But I love the fact that the the... The blockchain enables us to win-win, right? So the people within the Texas nationalist movement, the people within our community go, hold on. If we agree, that's where the value is. So I get this free, no-value airdrop based on my donation to a nonprofit organization. Hey, that's cool. But then to think about what could potentially happen in the future, and you go, wow, unlocking resources through community, bringing hundreds of thousands of people into the pulse chain. Whether you're part of the Texan token or not, if you got Pulse and Pulse X, you're going to like the fact that we're working on bringing a lot more people and a lot more volume into this ecosystem. David Lee says, to move beyond the winter, new leaders and systems are arising from nowhere to replace decayed, corrupt institutions. A repeating complex cycle is no accident. It shouldn't be a surprise to you, right? These things are waves. You know What's crazy about it, Mendelbrot's math, right? Fractals, right? The small looks like the large, right? The, the tree kind of looks like the leaf, right? There's this, um, you know, look at, look at our own cells. The, the code for who you are is in every single cell in your DNA, right? There's a framework to what we live in. There's cycles to everything. And actually, if you look at quantum physics, there's actually no such thing as matter, meaning it's all waveforms, right? It's, it's energy, and what is energy? Well, look at the sine wave. These things go in cycles. And this is another cycle. And David Lee is right on. And so it's really helpful to know what cycle you're in. It's just like anything. Are we in a bull market or a bear market? That's a cycle as well. What is the confidence of the people? Where are we headed? Right? If you understand how to pay attention, well, if you do pay attention to the cycles, you can understand what's about to come. Things are going to get much worse. And you're like, well, I want, I want, you know, everything to go up and to the right. This is not a time of up and to the right. This is a time of things breaking apart and being re, restarted. What's great about that is you're early in on the new financial system. This will be the financial system of the future. But it has to be one, in my opinion, that's separate from government control, right? That's the whole point of the blockchain, right? Censorship resistant decentralized, no centralized ownership. This is the huge opportunity. And what always leads the day is money. 
This is incredible, but you realize the implications of Richard building a vertically aligned ecosystem in a crisis era. It means we have a shot. And so what do we do? We build a token, we connect it to the political utility, and we go, hold on a second. We're going to be a part of the future. Wouldn't it be nice if we could unlock resources, free people from debt slavery, and create a place, a physical place where good people go? That's all I have to say. I could drop the mic. Bugs, what's up? What's up, Bugs? Joey Torres, good to see you. David Gomez, well said. Hit that like button. Oh, thumbs up button. Yeah, the like button. True change comes from the people, right? Leadership matters. Vision matters. Evening, Magnus, good to see you. Dr. Evil, yeah, that's uh, Klaus Schwab, isn't he? Like petting a hairless cat? Totally. Um, remnant of the Nazi empire. You know, you think about what... There's a, there's a movie, if you want to watch another video online from 1947 called Don't Be a Sucker, watch it. It is incredibly well done, and it tells us how did the Nazi, how did it happen, right? How did this Marxist idea, how did people pit each other against each other? It's happening right now, the same playbook, because it's a cycle. Paul Sex, what's up? Hey, man. Hex Cowboy, got to have a cowboy in the place. Was up, Hex Cowboy? Bring the Alpha KD. Push back on those mandates and bad policies. That's right. Mixed crypto arts. Good to see you. Bloated pig, right? It is totally. Hex Cowboy, will Pulse X sacrificers also receive the Texan airdrop or Pulse Sacrifice? Ah, good question. So we made a decision to include you will be qualified if you have either been a Pulse Sacrificer, a Pulse X Sacrificer, or you hold a Hex stake. That's it. And so what will happen is we'll read the blockchain of all of those things and you'll be able to come in and say, hey, here's my wallet. We'll check it against that database from um, from the blockchain and that will qualify you for the airdrop. So you're going to have to kind of raise your hand and say, yes, I'd like it because we're not just taking all of them and just pushing tokens. You have to actually come because not everybody wants it. I don't know why. But yes, we are including PulseX sacrificers. That's like 140,000 people potentially, which is fantastic. I mean, it's just awesome. Folks, this is how we create value is we work together. Oh, it's incredible. It is unlocking generosity, unlocking abundance. Um, but it's only per wallet. So you only get one if you use the same wallet. That's right. Now, what's crazy is because we can't do that. If you use separate wallets, like you used one wallet for Pulse and then one for Pulse X, you're going to get twice as much. But you can also, and it's going to be a meaningful amount, but it's not like, you know, the, the donation. You make a donation that you get points by the Texas Nationalist Movement, and that'll happen here in the next two weeks. And that's going to, we'll make that very clear. So pay attention. There's going to be a bonding curve, all that stuff. And we're going to basically say, hey, you can now give. That will be at the Texas Nationalist Movement. They are a registered 501c4 civic organization. You can give to them. It's non-tax deductible. They're going to keep track of that. And you can give um, crypto or fiat. And they're going to keep track of that. And they're going to assign points. We're going to read the blockchain. They're going to give us a list. And we're going to say, hey, here's a premium for giving. 100% of the money goes to them. Why? Because it's, it's a crisis era, and we need to encourage people to stand up because where do good people go? It's a vision, folks. It's a lot. Look at Brexit, right? People, Cameron, he was like, I, there's no way this is going to happen. And then, of course, people voted and he left. He wasn't the right guy to implement it. He was shocked, I think. Hexstakers, PulseX, and Pulse Chain. That's right. Those are the three. Thanks, David Lee. Pow, 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 pow. I got to see Mendelbrot at my college up in Washington State. What? Okay, I'm jealous. Je jealous. Micro, macro. That's right. As a, as below, as above. Yeah, that's what it is. Wow, fractals. The golden ratio. Crypto moves in the same. Right. The Fibonacci. Six point one eight two. My bad if that number's off. It's all right. You know, pi is a big part of all of that. Three point one four. Well, and you look at the golden ratio. I mean, just look at your look at your elbow to your wrist to your fingertips. I mean, all of that stuff, all golden ratio stuff. Yep. Preach crypto heartbeat. Thanks, bugs. Torn, cool art. Uh 1.6182. There you go. Yeah, man, I brought art rocks. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? There's a lot of neat stuff. AI, a lot of this AI art that's coming out. Amazing. 
I'm great. I hope you're enjoying your day. Thank you very much. Um, good updates and explanation. There's a video link. Good. Thanks, David Lee. Samantha. That's right. Uh, mixed script art. Thanks, dude. That's right. So here's a question for you in the chat. Love to hear your thoughts on this. People are asking, well, what are people, you know, the Texan token, are they Texicans? Are they Texans, right? The community of people. So I'm really curious what people think. I mean, the natural would be Texicans. Now, there are some references to Texicans that are Mexican, and there's some, you know, some of that stuff actually exists right now. But it's just interesting what people will refer themselves to as we get into the launch of, of this and people come into the community. I'm, I'm talking tomorrow night with all of the volunteers from the Texas Nationalist Movement about this. And there's some excited folks. And that's so cool for us, right? Bringing new people in. So as people come in to our ecosystem, right? The Richard Hart ecosystem, they come into our community. Let's make sure we are welcoming, which I know you will be. Um, people are standing up in Sri Lanka. That's exactly right. This crisis area, I mean, this is the beginning of it, right? We got people in its unrest, right? And it's not all related, but assassinations of former um, prime minister in Japan, the people of Sri Lanka, the people in the Netherlands, people in Canada, the people in the United States. I mean, people of Texas. I mean, people are not happy with the rulers and leaders. They're not happy with the system. They're not happy with people indiscriminately printing money and debasing things and literally stealing from them through inflation, right? The crisis era. Good people have to step up and say no. And so you have to have uh, levers and handles, and that's what we're doing. The blockchain is such a gift. And it's funny, people are like, yeah, get your political stuff out of the blockchain. I'm like, if the blockchain wasn't meant to impact every part of our lives, then it's like saying a pen is only useful to write your name. Not to write a letter, not to make art, not to write a poem, not to write a, a movie script or a... No, this is a tool, folks. And if it's not going to impact things in our life, then it's, then it's weak at best, right? It's not about just getting rich. It's about making this world, using this tool to be able to help free the damn captives, period. People are in bondage and they've been in bondage and it's a constant cycle of people being called out of their own personal Egypt. What is Egypt for you? It may be you're dealing with bad relationships. You may be dealing with addiction. You may be dealing with um, all kinds of things, right? You may be dealing with um, cancer. You may be dealing with, um, you know, physical ailments. My dad died on March 18th, right? And when when you lose a parent, you know, it's a significant thing and you mourn that. You know, you're called out of these things. We're, we're called out of debt slavery. We're called out of these things. And the question is, are we going to encourage people and be a part of helping free the captives? I think Richard Hart gets that vision 100%. What is he, what is he doing all the time? Saving people from themselves. What does he want to do? He's advocating for people not to get wrecked. He's telling you when there's a bug here and there. He's saying, don't do that. Not your keys, not your coins. He is actually a person who cares about you winning now, he likes getting the credit. There's no question about that. But he's an advocate. That's his core like value is, is, is advocacy for people, watching out for people. Isn't that great? That his primary motivation isn't just to get rich because he was already rich? Well, he wants some glory. Well, let's give him some glory. What do we get in return, folks? advocacy and then a whole system that we can build on that literally is sovereign it's literally immutable this thing is an alternative to the government cbdc's they want to control us they want to oh it's it's klaus schwab and all these people this era this crisis era this is where we stand up when we say nope nope what was that what was that uh, in living color homie don't play that that's a reference for you. There's a 90s reference for you. I think that's what it was. Remember that one? Samantha Kelly says, Rags also re recently did a great video, which was a thorough explanation 
uh, of it all on his channel. That's right. We continue to do it. Yeah, he did a very good job. So Hex Cowboy says, I like Texicans. Texicans is cool, right? Hexicans, Texicans. You know what I think? I think Texas will be the place in which the first Hexaco, the literal Hexaco will exist. And I think there will be new Hexacos or Hexacos all over the place. But what's so cool about Texas, there's a ton of land in Texas, you know, un, unsettled land, if you will. It's, it's not cheap. But how cool would it be that in every country or continent, we've got a place that's like, welcome to New Hexaco. Literally, you can go and park your RV and hang out with Hexicans. That would be awesome. Hexicans in Texas. Texicanos. There you go. There you go. Texicamales. Oh, my gosh. You guys are the best. Skilling family, happy Saturday evening from England, Matt. Thank you so much for that. Greetings to you as well. Hope you're having a good night on a Saturday evening in what uh, what part of England are you in? You know, I, I've said it before. I'll say it again. One day I want to mudlark on the Thames. I watch those videos all the time. I'm a, I'm a treasure hunter, right? Or mining gold in the hearts of men and women. Um, <laughs> all right. Texocan, I think Texican, Texocan. Well, Texit is the the exiting, right? That's Texit. That's a that's the referendum, right? The Texit movement. The token is called Texan, the brand. What does it mean to be a Texan? So the people might be Texicans. I'm not sure. But then there's also Mexicans who are in Texas who like to be called Texicans too. Farmers, pay attention. That's right. Well, these are the people, man. Hex revision. What's up? Hey, kids. Hex. All right, let's be in our best behavior. Hex revision. I have a message for you. You wanted to have the bonding or the um, the yield curve. It's now in the white paper underneath the chart. We made it for you for tomorrow at one. I think that's central time. So hex revision. You got what you asked for. It's in the white paper now. Grow your own. There you go. Textopians. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's good. That's really good. All right, I'm going to get through the chat and we're going to be done. Sexy Texies. Boy, you're just bringing up all mixed crypto arts. I love this. Currently in, but as you know, it can change. Okay, well, this is other people chatting, chatting. Um, thanks, thanks for the fun at your expense. Pens are inefficient toothpicks. That's right, right? You can, you can pound in a nail with your shoe, right? When you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Torin's like, homie, don't play that. Thank you for noticing that reference. Happy to be of service. Thank you, Samantha. Stephen Cote. Cote. He needs to launch it before they pass legislation is passed blocking him from launching. That's the cool thing about launching is jurisdiction, right? So here's what's fascinating about the internet. And, I, and I'm going to bring up a really interesting point. Do you know you actually don't own tokens? You don't own crypto. What are you talking about, Crypto Heartbeat? Of course I own tokens. No, you own a key to your tokens on the blockchain. The wallet itself does not hold tokens. It is the keys to the tokens. Now, you could make a case, but when you think about possession of something, right? Let's say I, I sent you, um, I'm going to send you 5,555 hex right now right? Do you have possession of it? Can someone seize it? Okay. And the reason I say you don't really own your tokens, you own the keys to your tokens is because possession, nine tenths of the law, right? This idea of, let's say a value. And I say, all right, here's a painting. And that painting is worth a thousand dollars or a million dollars, right? Somebody can come and seize that. But here's what's interesting about seed phrases. Seed phrases are in your mind, right? Let's say you've memorized them and let's just use that conceptually. You have the right to remain silent. So the keys to unlock the value, where is the value? It's an interesting concept to really understand. And that's something that legally is going to be a big issue in the coming years. Is this idea of, I, I have this right to remain silent, right? So we're like, you, I know you've got a ton of crypto. Do I? Yeah, I know you're the OA, Richard Hart, right? Now. We're going to seize your all of your resource. Well, what do I have? How do you know I have them? So you have the keys to them, right? That unlocks the value that you can swap and trade.
But at the end of the day, there's no possession of tokens, right? They're not like, oh, they fell out of my pocket or come into my house and they're in my safe. Now, you could steal the keys to something, right? And somebody could share those, certainly, and get access to them. But that's a really interesting you know, concept as it relates to DeFi. And it's going to be a big, big issue. And that's what is so great about this censorship resistance, this decentralized nature, and the fact that Richard has taught us all how immutability is so important, no admin keys, all these things. Because launching this stuff, and now you could make a good point with, you know, how could people take down hosting providers and stuff? But at the end of the day, I believe that in this time of unrest, we're going to reset the system on our terms, not on Klaus Schwab's terms. And so, um, you know, the U.S. is different than, you know, wherever Richard lives. I mean, that's why we need a place like Texas that has the right policies that relates to crypto, right? Guess who's going to be asked? about Texas. Let's say Texas becomes independent again, right? Becomes a republic again. Somebody's going to have to say, well, what are we going to do about blockchain? What are we going to do? What should, what should our blockchain policy be? Hello, Richard Hart. What should the blockchain policy be for a new country? What do you think the best thing to do is? That's what I would do. That'd be the first thing I'd do. Hey, Richard, can you advise us on what you think the absolute best way to do this is? He's been sharing that stuff with us. And yachts, don't forget the yachts. Yahtzee, Drew Davis, you make me want to visit Texas. Always here and see great things about it. Yeah, got to have some barbecue. There's nothing like Texas brisket. Whew. All right, if you have a wrench, will you remove these, um, these spam things, please? David Lee, if you're around, um, keep up the good work. Thanks, El Hexalente. Hey, I, I feel honored that we got some spam in the chat. Drat mods, time for wrenches. Yep, I've got some people that have wrenches. Um, I endorse Grow Your Own. Torin, all right. Hexray Vision, thanks so much. Um, got the graph, feverishly working on my presentation. Dude, thanks, man. Thanks for your support and your help. Um, I may stop in. I've got some things to do tomorrow, but I know Rice is a wonderful representative, but he is a ginger, and we understand what that means. Um, Drew Davis says great background. Yeah, this is a, it's actually a television. It's not a green screen. And so that television has, uh, the mystic forest on it. Afternoon, Richard. What's up, Richard Cranium? Good to see you again. David Lee. Thanks for your help with the, yeah, David, hopefully you got the wrench there. Um, yeah, so tomorrow's tech talk. I'd encourage you to check out tech talk. It's going to be on Hexray Vision's channel. There's going to be a group of folks. They're going to be talking about the Texan token. Rags is going to be in that group as well, which is good. Um, and then there's Briz. What's up, Briz? You know what? When is the biz with Briz coming back on, on uh, Rags to Riches? That's what I want to know. It's the best part of that whole channel. It's the only reason you would ever subscribe and like is because of the biz with Briz. The problem is off ramps changed now, just seized 100,000 XRP and will not tell me why. Been fighting for a month. They're based on remote islands off the coast of Africa. They are exchange for Atomic. There you go. I mean, one, it's the Wild West, right? We know that because they're, you know, regulatory stuff, but that's the greatest thing. Like, it's this idea of um, the blockchain represents sovereignty and freedom. We're building digital countries, folks. Digital countries. Because the value comes from our agreement. That's all fiat is. It's an agreement. But I'm going to tell you, we don't have, you know, we don't have this vertically aligned ecosystem, you're at the beginning, folks. And you think, oh, what do I what do you mean we're at the beginning? It's not even mainstream yet. But what's going to survive? Richard Hart projects are going to survive. Why? Because they're built correctly, right? You know this to be true. That's incredible. Briz. Briz. The biz with Briz. All right, folks, thanks for joining the pulse today. This was a special Saturday afternoon. We've been going one hour to the minute. It is great to have you here. Just for a reminder and as a review and a recap of all this stuff, when you look at the generations, there are times that repeat themselves, right? There was an unraveling and then there's a crisis. We are in that crisis era. A lot of the folks that do a little bit of this predicting would say that that goes to about 2030, 2032. 
So what's going to happen? Well, it's it's beginning, right? We had a pandemic after massive, um, well, 2008, right? This this housing crisis. Well, Lehman Brothers, right? All that stuff. Lehman Brothers. We we bailed everybody out. We printed indiscriminately, and now we're dealing with this massive inflation, right? We had a pandemic. We destroyed businesses. Now we're trying to destroy oil and gas because we want to help out our buddies who have green energy, and we've got just you know men are women and women are men. We've got everything upside down, you know, censorship. We've got all the stuff and people get tired of it. Regular, good, honest, hardworking people go, no, no. And then you mess things up so much and you fight over wars or you fight over this unrest and people can't eat. And then they go bankrupt as a country and then they go into the streets. And then what ends up happening? Necessity is the mother of invention. This is when we fix things. They have to get to the point where they're unbearable for people to pay attention. And that's what's happening. This is a crisis era. And so what is Brandon from Rags to Riches, myself, Ryan and Ray and all the people on our team doing? We're providing an alternative. We're putting our money where our mouth is. We're saying we are going to offer an option. You don't have to take that option, but we are going to stand with ways in which we can fix this. And we're taking that lead from Richard Hart. Honestly, the inspiration for the first endowment token comes from when I saw the sacrifice to the SENS Foundation. This idea of how you utilize giving to an organization as a means of token distribution for one, but two, of enabling something that's consequential to happen, right? This is not the Bored Ape Yacht Club, right? This isn't silly stuff. This is the potentially a new nation that represents what is great about America, right? Preserves the, the tenets of, of liberty, of fairness. It's a, it's, a, it's a big, big idea and a big vision, but it's not my vision, right? I'm just listening to guys like Daniel Miller, who wrote the book Texit. If you want to know more, check that book out, right? Go to tnm.me. Go to supporttexit.com. Check it out. Read the FAQs. Understand. Because you're going to hear all kinds of things. It's called Project Fear. Oh, since the... You know, you can't do that. They, you know, the, the Supreme Court said you couldn't secede. You couldn't leave. No. Article one, section one of the Texas Constitution says all political power is inherent in the people. Look at the Declaration of Independence in the United States. Look at the Declaration of Independence of Texas. Look at the Constitution. These are inalienable rights. You have the right to choose. You are a free person. Now, they don't want you to think that, right? Because they want to control you but you have that freedom. And why does Richard Hart go, hey, let's let's sacrifice for freedom of speech because that's important. Freedom of movement, right? Freedom to associate. All sorts of freedoms that are inherently given to all people. All, not partially people, all people. We need to kick the cord out of the wall. We need to reboot this system. And we're going to do everything we can with the power of our community in the blockchain to support an organization that's going to put it on the ballot and let the people of Texas decide. I'm a person, one person in Texas. I know how I will vote. But it's the people. All political power is inherent in the people. They choose what's best for them. It's called self-determination. Think about Manifest Destiny. Think about Texas itself. Mexico said, hey, this place is too rough to be settled. Anybody from the United States want to come? We'll give you free land, right? People went west in the United States. Manifest Destiny. They said, hey, 640 acres and a mule. The, great, the airdrops of land, the original airdrops. That's what we're doing. We're building a digital country, just like Hexaco. A community of people coming around of like minds saying, enough is enough. Secure your future, declare your personal independence, and don't mess with Texas. That's what I have to say. Peace and balance, everyone. It's the Wild West. We can stake our claim. That's it. ATX Crypto, what's up? Happy Saturday. I wish Richard would talk about this stuff more. I agree. It's vision. It's why I'm sold out is because I read between the lines, right? I don't look at, you know, I don't, I don't look at the watches and the cars and all that kind of stuff. That's not my thing. You know what I listen to? I listen to when he is um, advocating for people. I watch the little things that he does when he's at a, a meetup and he is actually kind to people. 
I see how he treats Hexo when he's talking to him like he's his best friend. I see him at the 731 gathering picking up Hodel Dog. I see how the guy dances. I see how he treats women. No, it's pretty interesting. But the guy is, you know, his interviews, right? He knows what hard times looks like. He is a regular person, salt of the earth. And you know what? He's got incredible vision because he's wicked smart. And we need to, I think we need to hear more of it. We need to hear more of it. How does, what is this vertically aligned ecosystem, Richard? What is it? Tell us about this. So how does this all fit together? I have some ideas what I think I hear you saying, but would you say it again? Because leadership's about repeating yourself. And sometimes the hard part for a leader is, I've said this a million times and you have to say it a million and one times because that's leadership. You have to remind the people why they're here. Why are you here? Because it's bigger than just getting rich in one Lambo. It's about literally how do we push back? How do we create the future that we want to live in? Because a lot of people are just like, yeah, I just want to be retired. I met guys in Austin. There's like 27-year-old kid. He's like, yeah, I'm retired. Yeah, I'm retired. Hex retired me. I was like, you're 27, dude. What are you going to do with your life? <laughs> Whatever I want, right? That's not the goal. There's a, there's a purpose in this time for people to um, contribute, right? Community is strong. This community is strong. And it's based on love. It's, uh, it's based on considering others in, in addition to yourself. And that's the true advocate. You know, I think a lot of times people think that Richard is a, um, you know, just a prick, right? Just a guy who just cares about himself. I assure you, he understands how to help other people. He understands the power of that. And that's why he values, values the community because it's where the, it's where it comes from. Right. But it's an extension of him. Why can I relate to him? Because his dad worked, worked HVAC and so did my dad. His mom had schizophrenia and so did my mom. I, I see that. He's worked in a hot attic. I have to, right? Blue collar people, salt of the earth people, people in the military, people that drive trucks, people across the world that are like, you know what? I want it to be better for my kids and my grandkids. And right now it's going to hell in a handbasket and we need to do something about it. We need to support a vertically aligned ecosystem. And what is that? It's a layer one. It's got the whole system state in it. It's got stores of value. It's got new roads, infrastructure we can build on. It's got great tokenomics, 25% burned, right? Fees. And then it's got a DEX, a decentralized exchange that's got the greatest tokenomics of buyback and burn. It's the most liquid DEX. You get half of the pair for free. You want a yield farm? Knock yourself out. A wallet? Oh, yeah, a wallet. You want to talk about something that's really exciting? The Richard Hart wallets is going to be exciting. And then he says fiat on ramps and off ramps. Oh, yeah, and then maybe a stable coin, maybe a security token. Oh, Oh, now we're talking. So tell me more about this. Yeah. So what's the future look like when you have an alternative financial system that is free from government control? Decentralization is the future, my friends. It is the answer to these things. And then what is Richard going to work on? Longevity? He might work on advising people on how you do blockchain voting. Hey, that sounds like a good idea. Transparent voting? Oh, imagine that. Literally everything on the blockchain. Hey, that'd be cool. How do we do that right? I don't know, Richard. I'll bet you he knows right now. I'll bet you he wouldn't even have to think about it. You'd ask him, hey, Richard, how do you do voting on the blockchain? He'd be like, oh, yeah, you got to do this, this, and this, and this. You got to have this version and this backup and this. I don't know. He does. That's what we need to hear. I think that there's room in the blockchain world. There is room for people of great intellect and great vision to cast the vision of a future that is decentralized, that is empowering to the individual, that increases freedom and sovereignty and unlocks resources of abundance. Because what do we do on this planet but fight over scarce things? And what has Richard Hart shown us with Hex? There's enough to go around. We're just getting started, folks. We are just getting started. This, this community's only got, what, 300,000 people in it? Imagine when it has 30 million. It's coming. And we're going to contribute to that. Everyone does by liking, by subscribing, by watching, by coming to events, by supporting people, by making your own content, by giving DJ Cryptomatic a hug in Vegas, by making fun of Brandon's red hair, by not liking and not subscribing to his channel.
this is a consequential time that we live in and we need people like Richard Hart with incredible leadership skills and vision and intellect to show us the way it's the Pied Piper play your flute my friend right lead us because this future is bright and we've seen it many people have tasted right the land flowing with milk and honey I see Texas as that place. I really do. I see a place where that stands up. And, and you know, many of you know that I'm a, a Christian. You know that I have a Christian worldview. And I look at the founding of America and I think of what's on our money. I think of the Ten Commandments. I think of in God we trust. I almost laugh when I hear that and see it on the money. That's the last thing that people in Washington are doing is trusting God. What if Texas was a place? that lifted up the name of God and said, we are going to return this to popular control. We are going to encourage people to be free. Imagine a place. I think you may have to secede to succeed. You may have to secede to succeed. And what I mean by that is to leave your own bondage. Secession isn't just a state thing. It's not a, just a Texas thing. It's a personal thing. You have to stop what you're doing that keeps you in bondage. You have to flee the evil desires of youth. You have to move out of bondage. And a lot of times you're called out of bondage by leadership. When John F. Kennedy talked about going to the moon in the century, right? This idea of vision. That was this time where it just captured the imagination of people. And when you see some of the stuff at NASA that they were using and you see computers today, like unbelievable how limited they were and able to accomplish so much. Dude, hexiest man in the world, what are you doing? Here's to watching our community grow to 30 million people. Shout out to the legend, Crypto Heartbeat. Thanks, Hexiest Man in the World. By the way, Hexiest Man in the World and I are going to be uh, meeting up on stream. That's going to be awesome. Please help get the word out. Thank you, David Lee. Appreciate that. Another 999. What are you doing? And here's another shout out to God and Christ. Thank you for being a genuine self, brother, and paying respects to the Most High. Well, uh, you know what I've realized is that. Um, I've tried to do it on my own, and I got nothing. You know, when I tried to manhandle this world, it just manhandled me back, right? You get to a point where you've got nothing. You, you reach the end of yourself. And I didn't do that as a young man. But at 28 years old, I realized I, I gave up. I was like, I got nothing. I had a major crisis in my life, and I literally was like, God, if you're real, you're just going to have to show me. And he did. And Pastor Scott Jankowski, one of my favorite hexagons, he says, it's not my job to convince you that, that God exists. He will do that all on his own. That's what his job is. Man, I'm glad we've got some of this best adult dating site links, man. I've been looking for those. Haven't you guys? You're like, yeah, I wish there were some dating sites I could go to. And just voila, it appears in the chat. Thank you, Hexiest Man in the World. You're the man. I'm looking forward to streaming with you. Namaste. What's up? And shalom. Peso dude, thanks for the five, five, five dot five. The Mexican peso. What's up, dude? Peso dude, I love it. The peso dude is in the house. Uh, Stephen Cote, I believe it's Cody. I'm just going to say this. We're fighting the Luciferian satanic system, New World Order, as is prophetic. Wow. The problem is this world is run by Satanists. The people in control want to enslave humanity. Stephen, I agree with you. It's not a battle of flesh and blood. It's a battle of good and evil, right? What's interesting about people who have um, the godless, people who believe that we crawled out of ooze, we turned into a, a chimpanzee or a monkey or an ape, and then we started coding Python and built a blockchain and AI. Right? People that think that we are just the descendants of or crawled out of this ooze and just evolved into this thing, right? Oh, we're just just the, this is the natural order of things. Actually, it's not. 
the natural order of things is degrading. Things degrade over time. They don't improve. Certainly, they're survival of the fittest. I mean, if you're a Sherpa, your hemoglobin's different. You can process more oxygen at the top of a mountain, right? That's why you can go to the top of these mountains and not have the same issues as the Western people do. There are adaptations, but the evolution of things, things degrade over time. They don't improve. The wolf is the most complete genome of the canine. Guess what the Shih Tzu is, right? Guess what the, the um, Labradoodle is? It's a degraded version of it, right? It's a bastardized version of it. Things don't get better, they get worse. So when you think that that's what's happened, we're just here for a short time and you're just a monkey, then there's not really any inherent value because when you're dead, it's over. So people just want to get theirs. I just need to get mine. I'm going to step over you and step on you. And you know I'm going to get mine and I'm going to control you because I'm smarter than you are. You're the masses. You don't have an inherent value given to you by a creator. You're just a monkey. You're just somebody that's been, you know, you evolved into this. You have no, there's no like value to who you are. There's value to who you are. There's a purpose. And these things have been planned out in advance for you to do. The veil is thin, my friends. The veil is thin. And we are, this is a battle between good and evil, in my opinion. But that's the beauty. It's my channel and my opinion. And if you don't, if you don't agree with me, that's the beauty of freedom. The beauty of freedom of speech. You can share what you think. And that's the thing. I'm not here to convince you of anything, but I am here to share with you that I believe that if we actually defend fairness, equal justice, blind justice, we defend sovereignty and freedom and self-determination. We, we defend speech. We defend association. We return it to popular control. We get back to representational democracy, right? This idea of a republic. We get back to the premise that is that being a politician is not a career. It's actually public service. And you go back to your job afterwards because you're trying to contribute to the civil society being better. That's why we're in an unrest era, my friends. I agree with you, Stephen. Yep, I've hit my knees each morning to ask for his will to take over. Praise the Lord, bro. So great. Hexiest man in the world. I agree. I believe Richard Hart believes in freedom. Pulse may be a safe haven, but expect they will try to derail it. Absolutely. Absolutely. A little glitchy. Yeah, I'm having an, an issue here. All right. I'm going to wrap this thing up. Thank you guys so much for being here. I've gone way over what I thought I would. You have a great rest of your evening or nighttime or morning, wherever you are. Thank you so much. Um, and don't forget, you're early and we have a responsibility. You're going to find yourself in abundance and there is a springtime that comes after winter. And don't forget, don't mess with Texas. <laughs>